You're watching UTV News. My name is Ina Kosinska. Good evening. Secure environment for each and every Ukrainian. Delivering a speech at the Ukraine 30 Secure Community Forum, President Volodymyr Zelensky especially emphasized that now the issue of security is more relevant than ever. And it's a task for state and local authorities to pay as much efforts as possible to this problem, he added. Besides, the head of state noted every citizen of Ukraine has a right to protect his or her life, health and property from any infringement. Community safety begins where there is light in the street at night, where there are no potholes on the roads, where people are not afraid to ask a police officer for help because they know one personally, because they trust this person. Community safety begins where the local volunteer fire brigade works smoothly and quickly. Staff rotation in the government today. The Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine started appointing new ministers instead of those who were signed yesterday. Those were ministers of defense, economy, strategic industries, environmental protection and for reintegration of the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine. Since morning, the MPs were interviewing the candidates and making their decisions. The first ministry to get its new chairman became the Minister of Defense. It is now headed by former Minister for Reintegration Alexey Reznikov. After being appointed, he told about the first steps he plans to take on the post. The main thing to be done is the following. Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces Mr. Valery Zaluzhny and I will organize cooperation between the General Staff and the Ministry of Defense, and any, so to speak, existing competition will be abolished. The Armed Forces protect and defend us, and my task is to protect them in political, diplomatic, legal and other matters. The number of states that officially supported the prospects for, for Ukraine's membership in the European Union has grown. This is one of the results of negotiations conducted by a Ukrainian delegation led by President Volodymyr Zelensky during the UN Climate Conference in Glasgow. This was announced by Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba. In particular, the fifth declaration on the recognition of Ukraine's European prospects was signed by the President of Slovakia, Zuzana Chupotova. According to Dmitry Kuleba, almost a dozen bilateral meetings took place in Glasgow, and all of them are of strategic importance for Ukraine. On all the discussions, the President promoted the national interests of Ukraine. During all negotiations, the president promoted the national interests of Ukraine and strengthened our strategic partnerships. We talk namely about military defense, trade, economic, educational and energy cooperation. That is, everything that can make our state stronger. The head of state paid special attention to the security situation in Donbass and the energy crisis in Europe. Russia may increase its military contingent on the border with Ukraine in winter. This was stated by the Deputy Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Anna Mahler. According to her, now there is no data confirming the escalation. There are Russian troops on the border, but their number has not increased significantly. Earlier, the Western media reported that the Kremlin has increased its military presence near our country. However, the Minister of Defense of Ukraine and the National Security and Defense Council refute this information. About 90,000 troops are deployed near the border and in the temporal occupied territories. This number is decreasing. Later it increases. That is movement we are fixing now. This is not the first time we observe this. This is a typical movement. We are guided by intelligence information. We should expect more information in December and January than there is now. Intelligence says that it is during this period that an increase in the contingent is planned. The contradictions and inconsistencies in the presidential law on oligarchs have been eliminated. The Parliament of Ukraine supported them on the eve. Thus, the National Security and Defense Council will keep the register of oligarchs. The list can include those who meet three of the four following criteria. Influence on the media and political life of the country, control or ownership of a monopoly, and the possession of assets in the amount of, uh, of some 87.5 million US dollars. Those who are put on this list will be prohibited from financial political parties, as well as from purchasing objects of large-scale privatization. Heating and hot water in Ukrainian houses will not rise in price. Alexey Chernyshov, Minister of Community and Territorial Development, assured that the sums in the bills would not grow. The minister recalled that tariffs at the level of the previous season are guaranteed by the memorandum signed by central government and local authorities. The document, among other things, stipulates that the state provides heat pro producers for the population with gas at one of the lowest prices in the world, less than 7.5 hryvnias per cubic meter, that is some 30 US cents.
The state provides appropriate support, including financial support to the regions. Undoubtedly, the local self-government bodies for their part will also provide heat and electricity generating enterprises normally. We have agreed on this, because our task is to support our citizens and therefore actually ensure the prices and tariffs that existed in the previous heating season. Therefore, tariffs remain stable. Maternity state support through the DS state service portal. The Cabinet of Ministers has simplified the procedure for applying for assistance. Services will become more accessible to unemployed women who are registered at the employment centers, as well as for students. At the same time, the option of providing assistance based on a paper certificate will remain. They expect in the Ministry of Social Policy that some 14,000 Ukrainian women will use this simplified procedure monthly. The record number of new cases of COVID-19 in Ukraine. Over the past day, more than 27,000 infections were recorded. 699 people have died. Almost 5,500 were hospitalized. Most of all new cases were recorded in the Dnipropetrovsk and Odessa regions, as well as in Kyiv. Nevertheless, almost 300,000 Ukrainians got vaccinated against COVID-19 the day before. Almost 7,700,000 Ukrainians have already undergone a full-course immunization, Almost 11 million citizens received one dose. Neither the daily number of deaths nor the risk of being jailed scares those who sell fake COVID certificates and those who buy them. Since the beginning of the year, the police have opened almost a thousand criminal proceedings on the fact of forging these documents. But in the midst of a pandemic, the use of fake certificates becomes deadly. My colleagues will tell more. A fine or two years in jail will be a punishment for Ukrainians who, instead of being vaccinated, bought a fake COVID certificate. We are talking about a bill that will be submitted to the Parliament's consideration at the first reading. It provides for liability both for those who falsify documents and for doctors who enter inaccurate data to the system and for people using forged documents. In particular, it provides for the imposition of fines and imprisonment. Most of the fake certificates that can be bought on the Internet do not have a QR code. These are also fake certificates, sometimes even having the stamps of non-existent clinics. There will be no data on non-existent vaccinations in the national medical system and accordingly it will not be possible to generate a certificate in the DS state services application. Such a fake document is recognized on entrance to shopping centers, restaurants or public transport. It's just a crime. Well, first of all, these people do not care about themselves, do not care about their health. People do not understand that it will be natural selection even then, and no one knows how will they endure, will they survive or not. Sometimes scammers create special websites. For example, a 17-year-old resident of Kharkiv developed a platform resembling the DIA official application. Paying some money, users could create any document starting from an ID card to a COVID certificate. And people are ready to show their attitude towards those who break the law and decide to use forged documents. It was not so easy for us to get this vaccine, and this is first of all a privilege that one can get vaccinated for free. I'm pregnant and I have a COVID certificate. I took the first dose and I don't want to go to the intensive care. I want to be healthy. However, those who buy fake documents can still get two doses of the vaccine. We have examples. When a person bought a fake, a doctor committed a crime. A person bought a COVID certificate, got sick and decided to get vaccinated. In this case, a person must cooperate with law enforcement bodies because it is impossible to delete information signed with the key of a specific doctor. Since the beginning of the year, the National Police have opened almost a thousand criminal proceedings on the fact of falsification of COVID-related documents. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Larissa Zubenko, UATV News. The last grain, the Holodomor Museum presented the results of the second large-scale expedition. The staff managed to record 120 testimonies of those who survived the Holodomor famine of 1932-1933. People talk about the horrors of dispossession and bread-making, about what they had to eat, just not to die of hunger and save children. Some of these interviews were uploaded to the museum's YouTube channel. In addition, new evidence was found. Ethnic Ukrainians in Russia were also dying from the famine, artificially created by the Stalinist regime. 
tak rupivo. Just needle. I still remember its taste in my mouth and how I did not want to eat it. There was a grain of corn here and there, but it rustles. I remember how we had needles and dandelion leaves. They say that in those villages where ethnic Ukrainians lived, they employed the same mechanism of genocide that was in Ukraine and in the Kuban. And this was not the case near the villages where other ethnic groups are nationalities lived. The genocide was directed precisely against the Ukrainians. Chinese date fruit, kiwi, bananas and persimmons for more than 30 years in the village of Plodovo in Kherson region, seedlings of exotic trees have been grown. In a scientific and experimental farm, they are selected and adapted to Ukrainian climate. Persimmons are harvested here in November. Scientists have already patented three varieties of this fruit. Our journalists have visited the garden. Andrei and Yule came to this experimental farm in the Kherson region for young trees. A family from the Zaporizhia region decided to grow persimmons. We want a lot of persimmon. It's great, it's delicious and has lots of vitamins. Autumn has made its adjustments, so there are no leaves, but the fruit are orange, like the beautiful lanterns hanging on the trees. There are about 50 persimmon tree samples on this plantation. Scientists began growing this subtropical fruit here in the late 1980s, gradually adapting them to a local climate. We found some varieties of eastern persimmon which can survive winter. The trees, which we see here, survived a drop in temperature to minus 27 degrees Celsius. Each species is different in shape, size and taste. The largest fruit can hit 300 grams. This is a persimmon, an oriental variety. It is called Zarya. And as we can see, it is a pretty large fruit. And the small ones do not even reach 100 grams. At the same time, they easily endure frost. In Ukraine, three common types of persimmons are known. These are Virginian, Oriental and Caucasian persimmons. And there is one more unrecognized variety, the hybrid one obtained in the process of selection. The total area of the experimental farm is 760 hectares. Before the occupation of Crimea, it was a subdivision of the Nikitsky Botanical Garden Yalta. Then it became part of the Rice Institute of the Ukrainian National Academy of Agrarian Sciences. Many years of scientific breeding became a success. People from all over the country come here to buy exotic trees. We send these young persimmon trees to all regions of the country, even to western Ukraine. We send there to the north, to Kyiv region. Everyone buys them because everyone likes persimmon. Scientists plan to harvest persimmons by the end of November. They say that a fruit in a cold room can be kept fresh until the end of winter. They do not sell fruit now, but share with colleagues and guests. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Yanina Lebedeva, UATV News. That's all for this hour. More updates on our official website, YouTube, Twitter and Facebook pages. Thank you for staying with the YouTube channel. Goodbye.